Okay, next I'd like to talk about some behavioral decision theory related to utility. And I'd like to report on a paper that was published in 1981 in the journal Science. Uh, the co-authors were uh, Tversky and Kahneman. And later on, Kahneman won the Nobel Prize for his work. And uh, it was mainly because of this work on, on behavioral decision making. Um, what they did in this paper from Science in 1981 is they uh, had students as subject and they asked them a series of questions. First of all, they said, let's say that today's your lucky day and you have a choice between $240 for certain or a 25-75% chance at $1,000 or zero respectively. What would you do? Well, clearly the expected value is higher here. Nevertheless, 84% of their subjects went with the sure thing. 16% went with the spin. So this kind of uh, goes with what we were saying earlier, that most people are risk averse for gains. They then ask their students, okay, it's not your lucky day, but you have to play this game. You can either pay me $750 for certain, or you can take the spin, a 75% chance at uh, $1,000 paying me, or 25% of nothing. Now clearly they have the same expected monetary value. Nevertheless, for losses, 87% went with the spin, and only 13% of the subjects said, okay, I'll pay you the 750. So for losses, people are risk takers. Okay? So people treat gains and losses differently. So utility functions for gains are above the straight line, showing risk-averse behavior, and for losses, it's below the straight line, so people are risk-takers. And in fact, they said that this part here is steeper than this part here, so people are extreme risk-takers risk to avoid certain losses. Let's do another couple of examples. And you can answer these questions too, see if it makes a difference for you. Assume that when you walked in today, I handed you $300. And I said, well, today's your lucky day. You can play this game with me. I'll either give you another $100, or you can take the spin with a 50-50 chance at another $200, or, or nothing more. Well, in their study with students and subjects, 72% of their students said, I'll take the extra 100 So they're walking out with 400 for sure. Only 28% took the spin. So again, this demonstrates for gains, people are risk averse. Erase that from your memory. Assume today's your lucky day. When you walked in today, I handed you $500. But then I said, you must play this game with me. So you're sitting right here. You can either pay me $100 back, or you can take the spin with a 50-50 probability of paying me back nothing or paying me back 200. Now interestingly, only 36% gave me the $100 back okay, in their study, and 64% said take the spin. Now the interesting thing about these two games is that they're exactly the same. You're either going to walk out with $400 for certain or a 50-50 uh, spin at 300 or 500. Now, when we talked about gains, the majority went with 400. But when we, when we posted as losses, because of this risk aversion, uh, that the, because of the risk-taking behavior, more people would take the spin to avoid this most certain loss. So it has to do with reference point. The reference point here was 500. The reference point before was 300. And uh, now we're talking about losses versus before it was gains. So the behavior is different. Did you make a switch? We'll try this one. Let's say that there's this Asian disease and you're sitting on a committee to decide which research program to fund. Unfortunately, you only have enough money to fund one research program. You can fund research program A or you can fund research program B. If you fund program A, it's a sure thing. You're going to save 200 people. But if you fund program B, you can take a spin, there's a one-third chance that 200 people are going to be saved, and a two-thirds chance that nobody's going to be saved. Well, clearly, saving people is a good thing, and 72% uh, 
said, yeah, let's, let's save those 200 people. Versus 28% of the subjects said, let's go with the spin. Okay, erase that from your memory for a minute. Let's say that there's this Asian disease, and you're sitting on a committee to decide which research program to fund. You can fund research program C or research program D. Unfortunately, you can't fund both. If you go with program C, you're going to kill off 400 people, for sure. If you go with program D, of the 600 people that have the disease, uh, there's a third chance that nobody's going to die, and a two-thirds chance that 600 people are going to die. Well, when you frame the issue like that, talking about sure deaths, are you going to be responsible for killing those 400 people off? Well, no. That's why the majority now went with the spin. 78% said, yeah, let's take our chances. And only 22% said, let's go ahead and kill those people off. But they're exactly the same game. 600 people had the disease, and the only difference is now we're talking about sure losses, whereas before we were talking about gains. So, um, just how you frame the question is very important. One last one. Let's say that you've got plans to go out to the theater to a play, and the tickets cost $10. Two possibilities. Let's say that you haven't bought your tickets yet, and you get to the theater, and you look in your wallet, and there's $10 that's missing from your wallet. And you go, hmm, I must have lost $10. Do you go ahead and buy the ticket anyway? Well, in their study, 88% of the subjects said, yeah, I'll buy it anyway. Of course, now the tickets probably cost 100 bucks instead of 10 but anyway, you get the idea. 88% yes, I'll buy it. 12% said no, I won't. All right, over here on this side, let's say you're going to play that costs $10. You have the tickets in your wallet, you already bought your tickets, you look in your wallet and the tickets are gone. You've lost them. Question is, do you buy new tickets? 46% only said, yeah, I'll buy a new ticket. 54% said, no, I won't buy a new ticket. What explains this behavior? Because either way, you're out $10. Well, here, uh, people have in mind different buckets where they spend money. Now, you've already spent the money on the ticket bucket. Here you haven't spent money on the ticket bucket yet. So you've just lost $10, which is, is a different budget completely. Uh, you haven't lost the ticket, you just lost $10. So sure, go ahead and buy the ticket. That's why they've shown on eBay, to maximize your revenue, people have different buckets. They have the, the, the bucket for the price of the item itself, and then they have the shipping bucket, shipping and handling bucket. So they've shown on eBay that if you increase your shipping and handling a little bit and decrease your price a little bit, your revenue will go up. Because in the auction, the shipping bucket in the, in the bidder's mind is different from the price bucket. But you see how you could be manipulated by this. And in fact, advertisers and politicians manipulate us all the time. In fact, our children and spouses probably manipulate us this way too by framing things in terms of gains or losses. And you know, you can also use this in negotiation. There's some excellent research uh, books that talk about framing of negotiations. Have you ever wondered why they started calling uh, late-term abortions? Now they call them partial birth abortions. Late-term wasn't so bad. Partial birth just sounds gross, right? So it's easier to pass a law against them. Likewise, why did the party say, um, uh, start calling an estate tax a death tax? Well, an estate tax doesn't sound that bad, does it? You just, if, when somebody dies, you, you get part of their estate and you tax it at a higher percent. Well, death tax, well, they're going to tax me when I die? That sounds awful. So that's why they frame it in that direction, and that's why they're able to pass laws, just by putting that spin on there. You know, that's what spin doctors do, like James Carville, Mary Matlin, working for the campaigns. They make their money by putting this kind of spin on every issue, and they do a darn good job of it. So just keep in mind, every time that you're, you listen to the campaigns, there's a spin on every issue. And they thought a lot about that.